Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to another episode in my series on Shakespeare. In today's video we're going to be looking at Much Ado About Nothing. If you would like a more general overview of Shakespeare or some tips on how to go about reading his plays, then I will leave a link to the Shakespeare series playlist in the description box below this video. Much Ado About Nothing is one of Shakespeare's most performed comedies. We open the play at Leonardo's house, who is a rich landed gentleman in Italy, and he is welcoming home some soldiers from the war, led by the Prince Don Pedro his brother, his illegitimate brother, Don John, and his other men, Claudio and Benedict. The play then unfolds with two parallel love stories, one concerning Leonardo's daughter, Hero, and the other, his niece, Beatrice. The Beatrice and Benedict plotline is one of the most famous, and I think this is what everyone thinks of when they think of Much Ado About Nothing. Essentially, Beatrice and Benedict both are very strong, witty characters, both have decided that they're never going to get married, and they hate each other at the beginning of the play. They have a constant, witty repartee between them and then their friends conspire that they actually think they would be very well matched as a, as husband and wife. So they engineer a couple of situations where Beatrice and Benedict each find themselves individually in a situation where they are overhearing their friends talking about them. So Beatrice overhears Hero and her ladies talking about how the fact that Benedict is in love with her and Benedict overhears his friends Leonardo um, and Claudio talking about how Beatrice is in love with him and through through hearing this information, they then each actually start to fall in love with each other. The other plot line between Hero and Claudio I actually find quite funny, but it's almost quite tragic and it really balances out the love story um, between Beatrice and Benedict. In this plot line, Claudio sees Hero when he arrives at Leonardo's house, falls instantly in love with her and gets Don Pedro to woo her on his behalf at a masked ball that they have. Hero agrees to marry him and everything's hunky-dory, apart from Don Pedro's illegitimate brother, Don John, John the Bastard, who for whatever reason decides to scupper this union. and what he does is he gets his man to talk to one of Hero's servants, Ursula, from her window. He gets her to dress up in Hero's clothes, talk to his man, and he gets Claudio and Don Pedro and Benedict to overhear this and so that they think that Ursula is Hero and they think that Hero is being unfaithful to Claudio. This plotline spirals out of control so quickly. Claudio declares that Hero is unfaithful to him at their wedding. Hero then promptly faints. Leonardo is so ashamed of her, he doesn't know what to do, and then a friendly Friar um, comes along and says that perhaps they should pretend that Hero died um, because that would be better for her to have died than to live and be unfaithful and his plan is that if Claudio hears that Hero has died then Claudio's love will reignite and he'll feel really sorry about the fact that she died. Um, I don't know what it is about Friars and pretending that people have died, perhaps he'd just been in Verona with Romeo and Juliet, I don't know, but in this instance it does actually work out. Everyone discovers that Hero is actually innocent, Claudio comes back at the end of the day to marry Hero's cousin because Leonardo kind of says well you've killed my daughter somehow. Um, so therefore you have to marry her cousin instead and then it's all revealed that the cousin that Claudio is marrying is actually Hero so we're all happy and then obviously Beatrice and Benedict get married everything is good. What I find very interesting about these two storylines is that you have this Beatrice and Benedict love story which is actually very funny but not just in a kind of slapstick way um, because they're overhearing um, these conversations, also in a very witty way because they are equals and they have this funny dialogue between them and that is funny um, but it also seems to be a lot more complex. As individual characters there's a lot more to them and it's the sensibilities in this relationship that I think we latch onto today and we can see ourselves in Beatrice and Benedict and we really as an audience can can see that that's what the human heart is like and hearing that someone else likes you does change your perception of them. And then on the other hand we have this swooping romance and it's actual quite tragic romance between Hero and Claudio which seems to be so beautiful um, and then in the end it you know turns to tragedy when Hero is denounced and humiliated in front of her, all of her friends and family but it actually ends up okay and it's quite a strange um, subplot or side plot because I think things escalate so quickly within this plot line that you almost can't take it seriously. The fact that Claudio has only met Hero kind of a few times, decides to marry her and then straight away denounces her and it's so dreadful that they have to pretend that Hero has died. Like it goes on this absolute roller coaster of emotions. So although it's there as perhaps more tragic element, it doesn't feel like it has the gravitas of the traditional Shakespeare tragedies. One of the most obvious 
obvious themes in Much Ado About Nothing is of course love because we have all of these love stories um, happening but I think one of the main themes really is deception and there's a lot of acts of deception and misinterpretation throughout the play. From the outset we have this masked ball um, where on one hand you have Beatrice and Benedict and Beatrice is talking to a masked Benedict talking about how much she hates Benedict and how annoying he is and this is quite an interesting scene because it can be played that Beatrice honestly doesn't know who this person is is and is just talking to him about how much she dislikes Benedict. It may also betray herself because if she doesn't know that this is Benedict, then why is she talking about him? And perhaps it's showing that she has hidden feelings for Benedict or she can't stop talking about him herself. And then on the other hand, you have the option that perhaps Beatrice knows that this is Benedict and she's just talking him down just to rub him up the wrong way. Um, so that's kind of an interesting interaction that we have on that side. And then at the same time at this party, you have Don Pedro masking himself as Claudio and going over to woo um, hero on Claudio's behalf. Later on in the play we obviously have the two major deceptions of Beatrice and Benedict where they're overhearing their friends talking about them. You have Don John and Ursula deceiving Claudio into thinking that Hero is unfaithful. Later on we have Hero pretending that she's dead and then we also have this fake wedding at the end where Beatrice and Hero both come um, masked as other people and then it's discovered that that's who they are and they're going to get married. And then the other really interesting theme for me is the presentation of men and women and their differences and actually who men and women are. On one hand you have Beatrice who is a very modern representation of a woman, she's very strong, she's independent, she's decided at the beginning of the play she's never going to marry and she is presented as an equal to Benedict who equally has decided he doesn't want to marry. Beatrice's reasons seem a little bit more um, traditional in that she would lose her independence if she did get married. From Benedict's point of view he makes a lot of jokes about husbands being cuckolds which means that they are they have unfaithful wives, their wives are cheating on him. There's actually a lot of jokes about cuckoldry throughout the play and it seems very clear from um, perhaps Don Pedro and Benedict's perspective that all husbands are cuckolds and that it's inevitable that a wife will be unfaithful which is quite an interesting perception of women, especially where at the same time we have this plot line with Hero and Claudio. Hero is a very traditional representation of a passive upper class uh, daughter of Italy at this time. She is almost silent when she's in company with men, even at the point where Claudio denounces her at her wedding. All she does is faint because she can't handle it, she doesn't really stand up for herself. But she does talk a lot more when she's with her serving women and when she's with Beatrice, she has a lot more of a personality. She's also very obedient and continues to marry Claudio at the end of the play despite all of the heartache and humiliation that he's caused her and um, because her father has commanded it and Leonardo's perception and relationship with his daughter is equally interesting he does say when um, Hero is denounced that he would rather that she were dead than be alive and bring this shame on the family um, so although he loves her there is this very strong sense of duty that he puts upon her which doesn't seem to be put upon Beatrice which is okay because she's an orphan and she's living with her uncle but she doesn't seem to have this duty to marry and be faithful in the way that Hero does. I also think it's very interesting to look at Claudio as a character and his perception of women because right at the beginning of the play he <laughs> falls in love with Hero after seeing her once and straight away decides that's the girl for him. But he doesn't go and talk to her himself. What he does is send Don Pedro in, masked as Claudio, and gets him to woo her for him. And there are times where he thinks that perhaps Don Pedro is trying to win Hero for himself, and he gets very jealous, but then in the end it's all okay. But he's very quickly taken in by this presentation from Don John of Hero being unfaithful. And to be honest, what does Hero really do? She just talks out of her window to a man, Hero, Ursula, what does she do? That's not really being unfaithful, but to him that's it. Um, she's unclean. And not only does he decide to call the engagement off, he wants to humiliate her in front of everybody at her wedding. He completely denounces her as a person. Um, and then later on, he doesn't actually show remorse when he finds out that Hero has died. Um, he does show remorse, however, when it is discovered that she was innocent and she wasn't unfaithful at all. That's when he feels sad about the fact that she's died and he's so um, sorry to Leonardo for this situation that he agrees to marry um, Hero's cousin um, <laughs> that Leonardo says that he has to marry now. And he's okay with that. He's like, that's fine, I'll just marry her then. In terms of adaptations, there are some fantastic ones that you can go and watch if you are interested in seeing Much Ado About 
about nothing performed there's one from the 90s starring kenneth branagh and emma thompson who give absolutely fantastic performances there are some perhaps less than brilliant performances in this film but the good definitely outweighs the bad and it's so beautifully shot um, in the italian countryside and i would really recommend that one another one which gives a different angle is a joss whedon one um, which is set in the modern day and this is really funny it really shows the kind of witty banter um, between Beatrice and Benedict in a very different light because it's set in, in the modern times and it's quite sarcastic and dry and I really like that and what this one does particularly well is show the visual comedy with Beatrice slash Benedict overhearing this conversation and there's a lot of scope for putting a lot of slapstick humour into those scenes and I think this adaptation does that very well. So I would love to hear if you have any more thoughts about this play, if you studied it in school um, let me know what other plays you'd like me to do an analysis of and or if there are any other topics to do with Shakespeare that you'd like me to talk about or discuss let me know in the comments below and I will see you in my next video bye